Patrick McGowan, who starred as number six in The Prisoner, with the 1965 Austin Minimoke used in the cult TV series and which now has been restored. A tall, grim-faced gentleman has found himself transported against his will from his London home in Buckingham Place to a brightly colored realm where local appears to be the mantra as in oh, we're only the local service. The telephone exchange cannot connect him to the outside world and when he summons a taxi, an Austin Minimoke can only transport him within the confines of the village. He subsequently steals one of these elaborately decorated cars to effect an escape, only to encounter a large and very irate beach ball named Rover. These were the scenarios witnessed by countless startled television viewers when Arrival, the first episode of The Prisoner, was transmitted on September 29, 1967. Fifty years later, that same Moke taxi has returned to Port Marion to commemorate one of the few television series that can be fairly described as iconic. Taking part in the celebrations were several of the program's stars and one of the highlights of the day was a school party, all seemingly engaged on a GCSE art project, reacting to Fenella Fielding's Tannoy announcement that number six has escaped. Their response described an arc from amusement to mild terror which was entirely in keeping with the spirit of Patrick McGowan's masterpiece. Several vehicles will forever be associated with the prisoner, from the Princess 4 leader hearse of the opening credits to the Scammell Highwayman lorry of the final episode, but two cars have televisual legends. The first is number 6's personal transport the Lotus Super 7 series 2 that the character built with my bare hands. McGowan spurned the chance to drive an Elon on screen and most editions show him from behind the wheel of a factory demonstrator 7. This car was subsequently sold to an Australian enthusiast and so a second Lotus was sourced from a private owner who lived near to the MGM British Studios at Boreham Wood, while Fallout featured a third 7 powered by a Ford 100E engine rather than a Cosworth-tuned 1.5-liter unit. One detail that truly dates car 120C is that it lacks direction indicators, but then our hero is not the sort of chap who believes in any form of decadent luxury. The mini moke after restoration credit Jay Williams and then there is the moke, or rather four of them. Anyone watching The Prisoner gains the impression that number two had an endless fleet to assist Tisher cunning plans, but this was due to the magic of editing. Just as the series combined location work with scenes shot in the studio, an overdubbed siren could turn a taxi into a police car or an ambulance. The car that is now co-owned by Phil Kant and Jeremy Guy was converted by Wood Pickett in May of 1965, the year that the Moke's image underwent a sea change. The vehicle that British Motor Corporation originally intended as light utility transport for the military or for use by manly chaps to do royal explorations or building sites was increasingly perceived as a fun car. John Borman used a customized Moke in the Dave Clark 5 pop film Catch Us If You Can and by the mid-60s one of the cheapest four-wheel cars in Britain was increasingly favored by dedicated followers of fashion. The Moke is converted by Wood Pickett in the 60s with brightly striped PVC upholstery and mock wood decoration credit J. Williams when HLT 709C was converted, the plan was apparently for it to be offered as a regular option. Retailing at just £664 9 S2D. The Moke featured in the Coach Builders publicity, being photographed at the Hilton Hotel and other fine venues. One theory as to how it came to be cast in The Prisoner is that a member of the production company saw it in the capital and realized that it was ideal for their latest project. Three other cars were subsequently built although, in Phil's words, they are similar but not identical, with a detachable canopy, brightly striped PVC upholstery, mock wood decorations plus a more upright windshield to reduce camera reflections. The fiendish authorities were evidently too parsimonious to specify the optional seat belts, second windscreen wiper, heater or windscreen washers, but the Kant Guy Moke disposed one very useful modification. The Moke before restoration, in a rather sorry state unlike its three sister models, there is a 998cc Cooper engine under the bonnet, which is more than sufficient to cope with an escapee from the village. Filming ended in 1967 and, although many memories of The Prisoner are lost to time, it is believed that HLT 709C appeared at the program's press conference. Today, just two of the village's fleet survives one that was restored by Phil in the 90s now lives in the USA, plus the only British-based model. The latter was acquired at auction by Messrs Guy and Kant in 2015 and according to Phil, nobody knows what had happened to it until it was found in a barn in Holland in 2011. It is possible that a former member of the crew had privately exported it during the mid-70s and, 20 years later, the condition can best be described as poor it was structurally unsound and a non-runner. At least it did retain its number plate, the village motif on the bonnet and the candy-striped roof. 
the Moketport Marion with its restorer Phil Kant, who co-owns the car with Jeremy Guy Credit J. Williams and so, Phil embarked on a mammoth restoration, possibly with the threat of an irate rover and or an even more irate Leo McKern serving as an extra incentive. He refers to the Moke's performance as nippy and when being transported through Port Marion in a completely open car that is devoid of doors, one does indeed feel the sensation of speed. Most importantly, to experience a car that has entered the lexicon of popular culture is beyond price. Car 120C was said to have been written off in an accident circa 1969, but rumor has it that the hearse now lives in France while the mini Moke taxi looks primed and ready to reinforce the message of the village jollity with an iron fist. Be seeing you. For tips and advice, visit our advice section, or sign up to our newsletter here AZ Car Finder.